Hey Brad, so you uh, gave an amazing talk on uh, self-driving cars here at uh, Fox Studios at the Singular University. There is one thing that really caught uh, my, my attention is the uh, consequences of self-driving cars long-term, which we can talk about what is long-term, but uh, uh, parking lots disappearing. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Luke. Uh, there's really a whole lot of industries that will change because we've become sort of blind to how big cars and personal transportation are in our society. So obviously the automotive industry is going to be turned upside down and uh, the energy industry as well because it's, of course, cars that consume a quarter of the energy in, uh, in modern countries that go away. But but like 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 what will happen physically to... So right. you, we, we so got cars that that they wouldn't actually park. Uh, if, if they were stopped, they'd be standing so they could leave, or if they're taxis, okay, they would so just we'll drop have you off. And a lot of parking lots available that real estate, a huge opportunity for real estate. Parking lots are going to start emptying out, and the people who own them are going to say, i got to do something else with this real estate. Okay. So we're going to have a bonanza of land in a lot of the cities, especially the more suburban parts. Of what, what else? So uh, uh, you're saying the, the, health, the insurance industry? The insurance industry already knows that as accidents go down, claims are going to go down, premiums are going to go down. Car insurance is the biggest part of the auto insurance in, or the of the insurance industry I mean and so it's through going, going to go through a big turmoil we're also going to see people who loan money for cars finding out that you know fleets don't borrow money from the bank for a car loan or lease a car the same way that they do today even doctors will find out their emergency rooms don't have all those people that were being injured in car crashes because that's a huge part of uh, health uh, medical it is. And, the, and the car repair industry is uh, you know I don't feel too sad for them but they're not going to be able to rake you over the coals for a bent panel in your car of course that's the insurance industry that often paid them so you will destroy jobs you People know, at uh, like tolls and parking lot, like uh, attendants and it will destroy jobs. You know, there will be some jobs that are lost, but I got to say, most of the robots in the world that are being built are being built deliberately to replace humans. Mm. These are robots that are being built to save lives, to give us more convenience and power. And yes, as a consequence, some jobs will go away. But whoever was growing up and said, I want to be a taxi driver, I want to be a parking lot attendant, these aren't the jobs that people think of as careers. These are jobs that you do because it's something you can do and find work quickly at and they're going to find other jobs just like and that. And tell me about the positives now. So you are saying the food industry will completely change delivery because delivery will become seamless? Well, we're going to make delivery robots that are not as big as cars, but as small as suitcases. Oh, smaller cars, like, yeah. like well, suitcases. Well, boxes, really. Rolling suitcases. Rolling suitcases that'll get you anything in 30 minutes, not just a pizza. So that's going so to So no change. drones. You see that bigger than drones delivery? Well, drones will be part of this too, but uh, there's legal questions about where the drones will be able to go and where the ground robots will be able to go. The drones will use more energy and there's just places they won't be able to land and they won't carry big heavy things and the robots on the ground will handle that. So we'll see them both playing a role in that but the truth is you know if, if um, small stores were afraid of Walmart now Walmart has to be afraid of Amazon or whoever it is like this which is going to be doing this retail delivery for people um, but the biggest thing of all by the way is what most people focus on is that we got 1.2 million people being killed every year in car accidents around the world you know in the USA more people have died in car accidents than all the wars in the history of the country no I didn't know that yeah it's back to the Revolutionary War and this is true in a lot of countries as well so I mean with millions killed and millions more seriously injured how many in the world die you said 1.2 million? million every year die around the world and you think that will just stop basically most of it, it. won't just stop but it's going to go down and get lower and get well, down and, to and maybe people a tenth injured, of that. that's just for people dying but I, I guess like it's a 10x more or 20x more people just being injured yeah yeah, yeah. so it's so it's, I mean, it, it's a carnage it's 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 like it's the largest cause of death actually for people between 5 and 35 and it's like any one of the made this is like curing a major disease mm. to get rid of the the carnage that cars are causing so and you said so the people in the car industry who think the google cars are funny and are kind of a joke are thinking of it like they're like the termites yeah so, the termite dust in your some house. of them think it's a joke and that these people don't understand cars they don't understand design they don't understand what consumers want i think they're making a mistake it's right? like the music industry you think it will totally turn upside down they won't all fall down so they've got smart people inside them that's always true in every company um but yeah we could see the center of the car industry moving away from the places it is today. Okay, so last one. What will happen to uh, human drivers? Uh, we were talking about this, so if yeah. I drive, uh, drive a Porsche or like a fast car, or if, if I just want to drive for pleasure, you said you said uh, people still uh, ride horses. That That's right. I mean, funny. it's a recreation now. It's not a way of getting around anymore. And I think people will be able to drive for recreation. And, and people who want to commute, I don't think we're going to stop them from commuting. I mean, they might pay a little bit do, more. Do you think some countries will make it forbidden? Like Elon? Like, not, uh, for, not for a long time. No. I mean, 
I, I may, if you want to go way out in the future, I could see it happening. I could especially see like it happening. Smoking. It's if like you, driving is like smoking. If you, you get no, no, actually, about a, about a third of people, by my estimate, never have an accident in their lives. So you know, why are we taking their keys away? So now, if you have some accidents, they might take your keys away. You get a lot of tickets, you might find they take your keys away. But those who want to drive some of the time, I don't think anyone's going to come and grab their keys. Awesome, Brad. Hey, that was uh, fascinating. Thank you very much. And no so problem. you are follow, or we can follow you on Twitter at at. Brad Tem, yeah. Brad Tem. Oh, with a Tem. T no, no, it's no Tem. P. T E M. T E M. Uh, but I must admit, I don't tweet that much. Mostly, my blog posts show up on my Twitter feed. So. Oh, okay. Well, we'll follow you. Uh, there. I know you're the giant. You're the world's giant Twitter fan. I am not. I'm not. <laughs> no, actually, I'm much more on Facebook now. That's not our conversation. Are you really? Thank you, Brad. Okay.